Good, happy Friday morning, and happy TGIF. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, Hurricane Matthews, now a Category 3 storm, approaches Florida. Hurricane Matthews weakened slightly to Category 3 storm overnight as it moves towards Florida's east coast, the Associated Press reported. Rain and heavy wind continue to plumb the southeastern coast of Florida. The AP reported the strongest winds of 120 miles Per hour just off shore. And there you go on that report. Hurricane Matthews Weather Service issues dire warning. The National Weather Service is not menacing words about powerful Hurricane Matthews. The agency Malibu, Florida of office warned Thursday night the homes and buildings in central Florida may be unhabitable for weeks or months. The dire warning is similar to one sent before Hurricane Katrina plowed into the Gulf Coast in 2005, CNN senior meteorologist Dave Hanna said. Guilford native living in Florida prepares for Hurricane Matthews. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. He's a monster reporter with a disability. You gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. He's gonna lie, I don't remember. Putting a wife to work is a very dangerous thing. I don't want to sound too much like a chauvinist. You have to be wealthy in order to be great. I'm sorry to say it. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. Hurricane Matthew closes in on Florida. New Hampshire native Catherine Krause is hunkered down in Fort Lauderdale. In a phone interview tonight, she described to me what it was looking like outside. The storm is moving into where we are right now. Um, it's definitely pretty windy and gray outside. It's raining sideways. Krause is in Florida pursuing a license to work as a chef on private yachts. The Guilford native only knows one person in Florida right now. Her brother, who is two hours north in West Palm Beach. But that's a location where the hurricane is expected to hit a lot harder. So Krause decided to stay put. Honestly, I don't have anywhere else to go right now. Um, I'm staying at a crew house and I don't know a lot of people in the area. Like so many other people in Florida, Krause tried to prepare for the storm, but supplies started to dwindle days ago. Uh, when I went to the grocery store the other day, everywhere was out of bread, out of water. They bought another shipment this morning, and then all the big stores closed down at around noon today. Oh but it was it was chaos. <laughs> what about the gas stations? Oh, completely empty. All the gas is gone. <laughs> and as Krause prepares to ride out the storm, she tells me she's looking forward to finishing her work in Florida and moving out of the hurricane zone. Headed way more inland after this, but yes, definitely looking forward to going back to um to the north in a, in a bit. <laughs> and we're looking forward to getting Katie home. Well, tonight the Red Cross of New Hampshire and Vermont is deploying workers to the southeast to provide aid and assistance to people in the path of the hurricane. And of course, you can always find complete coverage of Hurricane Matthew on our website, WMUR.com. There you can watch live coverage from our sister stations in Florida and follow the latest track. Okay, and there you go on that report. Hurricane 
Hurricane Matthews lashes Florida aimed dire warnings. 225,000 lose power. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. <laughs> Florida under siege from the most powerful storm the East Coast has seen in over a decade. Our team is on the ground in the storm zone. Hurricane Matthew, a demon in the dark, barreling into Florida's Atlantic coast. The massive Category 3 storm with winds over 120 miles per hour is wreaking havoc on the Sunshine State. A strong warning from the state's governor. Unfortunately, this is going to kill people. More than 3 million people urged to evacuate clogging major highways up and down the coast for miles. Preparations for Matthew's arrival going on for days. ABC News' Gio Benitez is in the storm's path in West Palm Beach. We've now reached a safe location, but don't get me wrong, we are still feeling those powerful winds and rain because we're still in the West Palm Beach area, but we hope to not be near that eye wall. That's what's going to be so dangerous when it comes ashore, if it comes ashore. That is what officials want people to stay away from. You're going to have those 100 mile per hour winds there. Some 2.5 million people are expected to be without power in Florida by morning, and no doubt it will take that long to figure out where that damage is. So far, power lines going down along the coast. Tens of thousands are already without power. In New Smyrna Beach, ABC's Lauren Lister is tracking the storm. A major concern here now, the storm surge. Where I am along the coast of Florida, it's expected to be 6 to 10 feet or more, meaning this waterway behind me could rise, and for residents here, flooding is a major fear. Hurricane Matthew is expected to continue moving up the coast, impacting Jacksonville, parts of Georgia, before hitting Charleston, South Carolina. Matthew has already torn a vicious path through the Caribbean, devastating Haiti, where over 100 people were killed and thousands of homes destroyed. The destruction there is still being tallied as the monster storm tore into the Bahamas earlier today, killing roofs off houses, sending debris flying and causing widespread flooding. The impact zone on lockdown. And tonight, close to 4,000 flights canceled. Even Disney World closing down in Orlando for only the fourth time in history until the storm is over later Friday. Matthew remains a powerful hurricane into tomorrow as it makes its way into northern Florida and Georgia. We'll have much more on this storm throughout the night on ABC News and complete coverage on GMA in the morning. Okay, and there you go on that report. Very intense. What the street wants to learn from the jobs report. In a market gasping for clues on the interest rate picture, a very real price of information is expected Friday. The non-farm payrolls report. UK pounds plunges more than 6% in mysterious flash cash. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. The last time the British pound was this week against the U.S. dollar. Wham, Madonna, Foreigner topped the pop charts, and Dire Straits sang Money for Nothing. Money for nothing Today, a pound sterling is worth $1.27. Two years ago, it was worth $1.71. Since the British public voted to leave the European Union in June, the pound has erased 15% of its value. The question is not whether Britain will leave the EU. It's when and how hard it will hurt. In markets parlance, hard Brexit or soft. For U.S. travelers, it means your trip to London is the cheapest it's been in years. For investors and businesses in Europe and Britain, it means many more months of uncertainty. Okay, and there you go on that report. That does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a... Great rest of your Friday. See you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.